Good morning. And I'll tell y'all right now, I'm on one. I just had a bar of coffee. And I, no, but again, if, if you're a guest of ours, we really do appreciate you being here. Because here's, here's what I know. You could be anywhere on any Sunday at any time. Amen? But you chose to put yourself here, and we thank you for that because uh, we make that a big deal. It's a big deal. And we use the term guest because we intend for you to come back. Visitors, they come and go. Guests, they usually stay a little while. Amen? So, uh, you know, God, God's already done a great thing this morning. Man, can I say this, man? Just If you served on First Impressions, if you serve on First Impressions, can you stand? In any capacity, if you serve on first impressions, would you please stand? Amen. These are people, from the time you get in the parking lot, amen, give them a hand. From the time you get in the parking lot, all the way in here, serving you coffee, prepping stuff, uh, and those are people that really make a, a, a critical difference here. Because we want you to have the best 10 10 yet. We want you to have the best experience that you can here on a Sunday. And you know what? Last last week, we started a new series. And amen, that series got started with a bang, right? We, we saw two people uh, that, that really went through baptism in obedience so that you and I, we got to see life change right up front. Amen? And he, man, that, that was just a great thing to see. And I don't take it for granted that God allows us to see that. Because it's not every day that you get to see people go from death to life. Amen. And, and so that you and I were able to see that was great. And, and we started off in this series, He is Jehovah. Now, you and I, we can say a lot of things about God. But it's far more important than what God says about himself. Amen. And it, it really, when he says it in his word and what he says about himself, it's just, it, it will blow your mind sometimes. And we got started last week. We looked at Moses. Right? I mean, we looked at Abraham, not Moses. We looked at Abraham. Um, I mean, it, and, and we saw that when, 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 when God asked, it was Moses, when God asked Moses, I want you to go to Pharaoh, right? And he said, I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go, right? And he didn't have a whole lot of confidence. He struggled. And he said, well, what if they ask me in what name, uh, who's sending you? What is his name? You know what he said? He said, I am who I am. Amen. And church, that right there just really took it to another level. He said, I am who I am. And we learned so much about I am. He said, I'm the ever loving God. He said, I am the unchanging God. I am the preeminent God. There was so much. But there was one thing that stuck out to me. And I hope you got this. And this, we really need this as we strive to be a church making a difference in 2023. And it was this right here. Encounter the time is now. It's not later and certainly not when you get it all together, but now. Today is all we have, and I am who I am, has called you and I to make a difference. To make the most for him. And that's what God laid on my heart for this church in 2023, is we need to be a church making a difference. Not a difference for you and I, but a difference for him. And I am who I am has called you and I. He's called you and I. So today, if you got your copy of God's Word, however you got it, you know, some of you got them smartphones, you got to be smart to operate. Okay? But we're going to be in Genesis. So go ahead and turn to Genesis 22. And while you're turning and getting there, realize that this is a familiar piece of Scripture. Genesis chapter 22. It's a familiar piece of scripture, but God's got a word for you and I today. And he's going he, he's to do something great in us. And what we're going to look at today, we're going to look at another Jehovah name. This one here, I have no doubt that you and I have encountered many times, that you and I have seen come to life many times, that you and I have experienced many times. If you haven't experienced this a number of times, you likely miss it. And the name we're going to encounter today, I'm going to go ahead and give it to you up front, is Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh says the Lord will provide. Amen? He will provide. 
Now, I know this. When I was in school, I didn't like tests. I wasn't a good test taker. You could give me all the homework assignments. I was great at that. I was a bookworm. But in every, in, in every phase of life, it doesn't matter. We all face tests, right? I mean, if you're a student, you're going to face tests. I hated pop quizzes, okay? I mean, if you're in a relationship, you're going to face tests. And that test may even be a time of separation apart to see if you're really meant for each other. And sometimes if you're in the workplace, your boss may give you a test to see if you can complete the task successfully. And then sometimes if you complete the task, you get a raise. Amen. Don't go to don't go to work Monday and say, Pastor Mike said, if I do this, I get a raise. <laughs> that ain't gonna get you nowhere. But sometimes we we do face tests at work. And here's the thing though about tests. Some are major, some are minor. Uh, when you have surgery, some procedures are minor, some are major. But here's the thing. You and I cannot escape this life without tests. And I'm going to just say I don't like tests. But I got, I got a question to ask you. What if the test you had to face was God telling you to sacrifice your only son? If God told you to sacrifice your only son, Realize this, and this is free. This ain't even in the sermon notes. You know what they always say about leaders? Don't ask anybody to do anything you wouldn't be willing to do yourself. He's going to ask Abraham something that he's willing to do himself. To sacrifice. I don't know if I'd pass that test. I'm just going to be honest with you. I don't know if I'd pass that test. To sacrifice your only son, if that was your test, how would you do it? Well, we're going to take a look at Abraham and see what Abraham does. Genesis 22, verses 1 and 2 says this. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. We, I mean, get started right off the bat. Now, everything's important here. You see there it says, well, when it came to pass, well, what came to pass? Well, you got to realize that Sarah was visited by the Lord. And she was told by the Lord that what? See, you didn't realize you were going to help out. She was going to bear a son, right? She was going to give Abraham a son. That's what it is that what came to pass. And guess what? Abraham's in his old age. And Abraham's going now in our standards today, I don't advise that. Like that that don't happen. Abraham is in old age and, and it's just as hard for you and I to believe it today as it was for them then. That he would have a son in his old age. But that's what really happened. And here here's what the, the fact of the matter is this realize this is not a temptation for Abraham, but it's a test. And we see who the test comes from. See, there's a difference. God does ne God never tempts us. God will test us. Amen? He's going to test us. And if you haven't been through a test, it's coming. If you haven't just gotten out of a test, it's coming. Some of you might be in the test right now. And that word test, it just generally means to prove. To put to the test. To prove. Now, you know, in our English term, you know what test means? Test really is, is to entice to do wrong. So we're, uh, don't think about test that way. It's a test to prove something. And God's got something that he wants Abraham to prove. And there's a difference between temptation and test. Because I think some of us sometimes go through life and we think, man, why, why did I get tempted? I said, why did the Lord tempt me? The Lord just tempted me. There's a difference between temptation and a trap. I love what Warren Wiersbe said about it. He said, temptations are used by the devil to bring out the worst in us, but trials are used by the Holy Spirit to bring out the best. Amen? There's a difference. There's a difference. And we need to know that difference. Abraham here, he's, he, he's, he's being spoken to. He said, God tests Abraham. God gave him a test. 
Here's what I know about tests. Okay? Don't miss this. God tests us to prove the quality of us. You cannot say that you're a believer in Jesus Christ and that you walk with him, that you talk with him, that you live for him, and you don't experience no test. Because if you're doing what God has called you to do, fulfilling his purpose in your life, you're going to run up against some resistance. There's going to be some friction somewhere. God tests us to prove the quality of our faith. Look at verse 3 here. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son, and he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Now, you still have to ask yourself, what would you do if you were asked? Only and here's why some of us miss what it is that God has to do for us. We can't get out of the bed. Can we preach this morning? I mean, you get everywhere. Look, Johnny got that travel tournament. Boy, you, you beat the people there setting up. Amen? The gate people ain't even there for take the money yet. But you see what the scripture said Abraham did. It said Abraham rose early. I love what Abraham's doing here. Abraham's doing a lot of action, right? I mean, he, he's, he's doing something. Abraham has a lot of action in this verse. Abraham, in this verse, look at what it says Abraham did. Abraham rose. Abraham saddled. Abraham took. He arose, and he went. Right? He, he, he did all this. And what I love about this, realize this. He's asking him to sacrifice his only son, and there was zero hesitation in Abraham. We didn't say, well, let me let me check Siri. Let me check my calendar, see if I got an open date. Let me check my email. I don't know if I can get up that early. There was zero hesitation in Abraham. Asked to do something that you and I would darn near seem impossible. And here's here's what you think about this. If I was Abraham, I'm probably like, man, I don't know if I could have slept at night. Abraham couldn't blame it on a sleepless night. He got up early. Some of y'all missed it. Oh, Pastor Mike, I couldn't come to church. I ain't sleep that good. You know what? This is the reality. I would hate to see if God cheated on me. Amen? Come on now. I would hate to see if God treated us that way. Abraham knew what to do, and guess what? Abraham did it. Abraham did. He arose. He saddled the donkey. He took the two men. He did everything he needed to do, and guess what? Abraham went to the place where God told him. Encounter, that's what it means to be all in. He took everything. He didn't leave nothing out. Some of us, we'd have had a memory lapse. And, and you know, with, with any test, doesn't there come an internal struggle? That's a component of any test. But no matter what the struggle is, no matter what the struggle was for Abraham that previous night, here's what Abraham did. Abraham obeyed God. Abraham obeyed God. So where in your life is God challenging you to obey God? Where in your life is God challenging you to just take the step? Where is he challenging you to take the step and obey him? That's what it's about. You know, uh, baptism, it's obedience. It doesn't save. Them being dunked in the water does not save them. Baptism is obedience. You know what the Lord's Supper is? Obedience. Doing what he's called us to do. I love what David Guzik said about this. Our faith is not really tested until God asks us to bear what seems unbearable, do what seems unreasonable, and expect what seems impossible. Ask yourself, have you been tested? Have you been tested? That's a great word there. Do what seems unreasonable. Expect the impossible. 
And I had I I, I said it last week. I have to confess. I, I get here a little early. I don't get here quite as early as Pastor Will did. I'm not getting here at 415. I'm still getting sleep out of my eyes, you know, but I got here and I and I made coffee and I told them, well, I just need to make this many. You know, the last two or three times I made coffee, we ran out. Like the Lord just bought the people and I'm shortchanging him saying, I'm going to make coffee pot for 60, 70 people. And it's never, okay, Lord, I'll fill the thing up. Be obedient. Have some faith. Genesis 22, verse 4 and 5 says this. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. Man. You see what day this is? The third day. That's important in the faith. Amen? That third day. The third day. Where they went, that place would be modern day Jerusalem. And on the third day, they get there. Get this right here. Do you realize Abraham had three days to process what it is God had asked him to do? He had three days. The church, I don't know about you, but I'm tossing and turning. I'm going every which way but loose. Had three days to contemplate. God wants me to sacrifice Isaac. And it's not just his only son. You've got to realize Isaac is the heir. Isaac is the heir, and God wants him to sacrifice him. And Abraham had three days. Do you realize Abraham having three days to process is a test within the test? Because that's where a lot of you and I probably would have bailed out. Right? We'd have went out the side door, the back door. We'd have found a way. He had three days. And here's what happened. Abraham pressed on before he even moved to Israel. Abraham was asked to sacrifice his only son, and he pressed on. And I don't know what you're going through, but I know I am who I am. And you need to take a step. You don't need to quit. You need to press on no matter how hard it looks. Press on. It was hard for Abraham. Abraham sacrificed his son. That took a lot. And here's what I know about Abraham that you and I need to do. Abraham trusted God. Come on. Abraham trusted God. You need to trust God with everything you are and who you are from the inside out. We trust him with all eternity, amen? We trust him with our soul. Amen? We trust him in your relationship. Uh-oh. Right? We'll trust him with that. But we won't trust him with that filthy thing called money. Uh-oh. Right? We'll trust him to be the savior of our soul, the creator of the universe, and yet there are things in our life that we still white knuckle to death because we want to be in control. Can I tell you something this morning? There's not ever a point that you are in control of your life. Amen? There's nothing you can do without him. He's the one in control. And guess what? Abraham trusted God. What things in your life is God challenging you with? Is it the job? Is it the promotion? Is it the boyfriend? Is it the girlfriend? What is he challenging you with to trust him? Because here's the thing. When you trust God, you got to give it to him. You can't come and take anything. It doesn't work that way. You got to trust him. Genesis 22, let's go back to 5. I don't want you to miss it. And Abraham said to his young man, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship him. We will come back. And, church, I don't know if you get this. Abraham says that him and the lad are going to do what? We're going yonder and we're going to worship. Can I tell you this? We just, I mean, some of our community groups went through a, a study called What is Worship? This is not them jamming out to their favorite song. Come on now. Worship here was an act of obedience and expression of trust. That's how they was going to worship. They weren't going over banging out to feel with it. 
They went to worship in obedience. Worship's more than singing. And here's what I love about this. Realize Abraham doesn't know. Abraham says, we will come back to you. That's trust. He obeyed and he trusts. Abraham says, we will come back. What Abraham didn't know, Abraham didn't know this was just a test. Abraham's not omniscient. He doesn't know all. God knows it's just a test, but Abraham doesn't know that it's a test. But here's what Abraham expresses. Whatever the outcome was, I'm going to trust God. Whatever the outcome is, Abraham's going to trust. Church, that's faith right there, that he was asked to sacrifice his only son, and he says, we will come back to you. You two servants stay here. We will be back. He didn't say, I'll be back. Here's what it says. Abraham confessed his faith in God and expressed it by confessing to his servants that we would be back. We would be back. I didn't correct that. That we would return is what he keeps saying. And here's what I love about Abraham. Abraham showed complete confidence and trust in God. He showed complete confidence. I mean, you, you say, how, how can he do that? Let me, here's what Abraham knew. Abraham knew God wouldn't break his promise. What was the promise? Genesis 21 and 12. Let me read it for you. But God said to Abraham, do not let it be displeasing in your sight because of the lad or because of your bondwoman. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice, for in Isaac your seed shall be called. Abraham knew God wasn't going to break his promise. He knew that God would not break his promise. And here's what he's ultimately saying. If Isaac dies, if I have to sacrifice Isaac, God's going to bring him back. I don't know how. But we coming back to you. Genesis 22, 6 says this. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it on Isaac his son, and he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. Man, don't miss this right here. Isaac is given the wood for his own sacrifice. Church, somebody was given the wood, and they had to carry their own sacrifice. They had to carry the wood for their own sacrifice. His father gives him the wood that he's to be sacrificed on. Let me tell you something. Isaac shows some faith here too. Amen? Realize this. Isaac, he's a young lad. If you want to say that. He's young. But I love, here goes Abraham again. Abraham, that guy, he's in action. Don't miss it. Abraham did what? Abraham took the wood. He laid it. He took the fire. He took a knife and Abraham went. Everything Abraham needs for the sacrifice he had. What was some of us doing? Oh, Lord, I forgot the knife. And I can't go through with it. Or I forgot the wood. Or we would forget something. We would have left a lot of stuff out. Here's what Charles Spurgeon said about that knife. That knife was cutting into his own heart all the while. Yet he took it. Unbelief would have left the knife at home, but genuine faith took it. Amen? Genuine faith takes it. See, I'm telling you, Abraham had complete confidence and trust in God. He was faithful. And you might be looking at your life going, man, it's not lining out, and, and I'm just not hearing God, and I'm not. It's probably where, where, where are you least trusting? What, 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 are, what will you not give to? Church, he can handle it all. He's big enough. He can carry the weight that you're trying to carry. Genesis 22, verse 7, says this. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, and he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? See, Isaac's no fluky. Isaac's starting to say, Wait, wait a minute, Pop. Wait a minute. We got the wood. We got the fire. But where is the lamb? Isaac knows what is to happen in a sacrifice. He knows that there's supposed to be an animal that's unblemished. 
And it, he doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. He's, look, he's starting to act, wait a minute, this thing is getting real. Imagine if you're Isaac right now. Oh, wait a minute, Isaac, you kind of old. You forget something? He didn't forget, but here's what I know about Abraham. Abraham practiced his faith in God, and he went up to the mountain, and so did I. A lot of times we forget about Isaac. Isaac showed some faith in his earthly father, and I believe that was due to his earthly father having confidence and trust in the heavenly father. Amen? He practiced his faith. So, church, let me say, you got to put feet to this. Okay? We don't have any pews. I can't say pew warmers. We got you can't be seat warmers. You got to put feet to the gospel. You got to it's 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 in action. Abraham practiced. He put it into play. And I know this about faith. It's not enough to just talk the talk of faith. No, you must live the life of faith. You got to live it. That's why Isaac could have complete confidence and trust. Abraham trusted the heavenly God. Abraham lived it out before him. Genesis 22, verse 8 says this, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Amen? See, in, in verse 7, Isaac addresses his father. And you know what Abraham didn't do? Abraham did not hide. Can I tell you, Dad, something? I don't mean to be on y'all, but the Lord gave it to me, so I'm going to give it to you. Dad, can I tell you something? You hear your kids calling out to you. Make yourself available to them. Amen? That's right. You hear your kids calling out to you. You hear them crying out to you, and you need to make yourself available. Abraham didn't hide. Isaac talks, so here now the father addresses the son, and guess what? Isaac doesn't hide. Abraham addresses Isaac, and when you look at the answer that he gives Isaac, then a my son, God will provide for himself. Amen? He provides for himself. He's going to provide the sacrifice. Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. That's what he's getting there. Abraham knew exactly what to do, and that was be obedient. Abraham knew to trust. God will provide. Abraham didn't know exactly, but he trusted. This is what Abraham did. We just seen it. Abraham confessed to Isaac that God will provide. Can I tell you this, moms and dads? Communicate to your kids. God will provide in his will. You can't live outside the will and, 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 and want God to bless you when you outside of him and not living for him. God will provide. Why did he provide for Abraham? Abraham in the will. Abraham obedient. Communicate to your kids that. Genesis 22 Verse 9 says this, Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order, and he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Man, this thing's getting real. Wherever it was that God wanted them to be, they're at that place, and, and they stop on Mount Moriah. They're exactly where they need to be, and that's in the center of God's will. As crazy as that sounds. Abraham and Isaac. They get there, and guess what? There goes that man Abraham again. He's in action. Abraham is in action. In verse 9, I mean, it says he built, he placed, he bound, and he laid. Abraham in action. Encounter family and friends. Abraham is serious about it. He's serious about what God told him to do, and he's going to be obedient in that. Isaac is much younger. At any time, Isaac could have overtook his father. Isaac chose to trust. Because he trusted. 
offer to the overcook Abraham. I mean, by, by all accounts, Abraham is, is, is well over 100 years old. Isaac is a young lad, as he calls. Abraham's going to grow through with this all the way. There's another way that Abraham practices faith. Abraham practices faith by building the altar and laying his son on there. Church, that's a strong faith. Not only did he build, he laid him on the altar. What is God challenging you with? To lay on the altar. Amen. What is God challenging you with in your life that you need to get rid of? And don't get rid of it, just eradicate it. What is he challenging you with in your life to lay at the feet of Jesus and leave it? He's challenging you with something. Here's what I love about Abraham's faith. What made Abraham's faith so special, but it's just real. Abraham, Abraham didn't have thousands of years of recorded facts to give him encouragement. Abraham's faith was real in real time. He didn't have what you and I have. He didn't have the whole story. He just had right then. And Abraham trusted and had faith. He didn't know how God would provide, but he believed that God would provide. Genesis 22, 10 and 11 says this. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called him, called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. Now, I want you to imagine that. Imagine that you're out and you're on the altar laying there and you see your father with the knife ready to come back. Now, imagine that you're Abraham. You see your son laid out on the altar. You're all in and you're going to do this and you raise him up. Church, I'm telling you, God is never late. Amen? He's right on time. Now, I don't know what Isaac is going through. We don't get his emotions. I don't know what Abraham is really feeling on the inside, but I know there has to be some sense of, man, this is the right. God said, do it. I'm going to do it. And if he had every intention of raising, guess what he had? He had every intention of plunging the knife into Isaac. Man, that's some faith. An angel of the Lord called out to him. So guess what? Abraham passed the test. Abraham passed. So what did God want? If Abraham passed the test, what did God want? God never wanted Isaac. But God did want Abraham's heart. Amen? God never wanted Isaac. He wanted Abraham's heart. So what area of your life are you not willing to give God your heart? That's what he desires. He doesn't desire some of you. He doesn't desire 99.9% .9 of you. He desires all of you. It wasn't about Isaac. It was about Abraham's heart. And that's what God wanted. Here's what God wants you and I to do. God wants you and I to totally surrender. Can I share this with you? Commitment. And surrender is different. Commitment and surrender is different. You know what? You can say that you're going to commit to study the Bible. You can say that you're going to commit to live a healthier lifestyle. You can say that you're going to commit to not drinking sodas. You can, you can say that you're going to commit to a lot of things. That's not surrender. Here's the thing. When you make a commitment, guess what? You're still somewhat in control. You can read the Bible or choose not to read it. You can follow through with that healthy lifestyle or choose not to. But guess what? Really, if, 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 someone, was to, if someone was to hold a gun to you and say, hey, uh, lift your hand, you're not going to go tell that person, well, I'm committed to this, I'm committed to this, I'm committed to this. Guess what you're probably going to do? You're just going to raise your hands. You're going to do as you're told. Church, I'm trying to tell you, there's a difference in being committed and surrendered. There's a difference in being committed and surrender. You simply do as you're told when you're surrendered. So here's the question I got to ask you. Are you surrendered to the Lord? There's a difference. That's why I, I, I don't like to call people volunteers. I like to call them servants. 
Volunteers do what they want, when they want, how they want. Servants will do whatever, whenever, however. Okay? Are you surrendered to the Lord? Not are you committed to the Lord, are you surrendered to him? Because surrender means I totally, Lord, I give it to you. That's what Abraham's doing. Abraham's expressing that. Genesis 22 and 12 says this, And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. This angel of the Lord is specific. Not only does he tell Abraham, don't lay a hand on him, don't you do anything. Don't you do anything to him. Abraham had every intention of killing his son, of sacrificing his son. Abraham had every intention of going through with that. And here this angel of the Lord speaks out. You've got to realize that, that back in the day, now when they was they, those, those Egyptians, they, they worshipped a lot of gods. They had a god for everything. And some of those pagan gods, they demanded a human sacrifice, but not our god. Really, God is saying to them, I am who I am. I'm different. He didn't want Isaac. He wanted Abraham's heart. Why did the angel of the Lord stop? There was two things. And it's right there in the scripture. He said, you fear God? You have not withheld your only son. Do you realize that's kind of what, that right here, what, 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 this is all pointing to Jesus. What did he say in John 3, 16? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You have not withheld your only son. The angel stepped in and stopped him. Genesis 22, 13 says this. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in the thicket by its horn. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. See, there was still unfinished business. God still required a sacrifice. But he still required a sacrifice. Abraham had gone to make the sacrifice. But here's what Abraham did that sometimes you and I do. We need, we need to quit doing this. We need to do what Abraham did. Abraham took nothing else but Isaac. There was no plan B. There was only plan A, and it was God's plan. Abraham didn't say, okay, I'm going to take this in case God don't show up. There was no plan B. Abraham was totally surrendered. God. But I love this right here. What did it say Abraham did? Abraham looked up and he saw him. Church, that's critical. Abraham looked up and he saw. Him. See, God always intended to provide the sacrifice. And I remember Pastor Will has said it time and time and again. He's always said this, head up, eyes open. And here's for you and I. Some of us some do not see the provision of God because they will not look up and open their eyes. Abraham looked up and he saw. Guess what? Guess who he had never looked up? He looked up. Whatever you're going, I don't know what you're going through. You're going through something. And there's a way out. There's a ram in the thicket somewhere. You gotta look up. You gotta have your eyes open. Genesis 22, 14 says this. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be provided. Abraham commemorated that place. He named it the Lord will provide. So what did Abraham learn that day that you and I need to learn? First thing is this. God will provide what we need. Amen? Now, realize this. I didn't say God will provide what you want. God will provide what you need. He will provide what you need. The second thing is this. Where does the Lord provide for our needs? In the place of his assignment. Where was Abraham? Right where he was supposed to be. In obedience. 
He will provide. When does the Lord provide for our needs? Always at the right time. And we really need that. Amen? He's seldom early, but he's never late. I remember my granny used to sing a song. He's an on time God. Oh, yes, he is. He's on time. Encounter, you can believe it and trust it. He's on time. He was right on time for Abraham, and he'll be right on time for you and I. Whose needs does the Lord provide for? Those who trust and obey. I remember that old hymn. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Amen? Those who trust and obey. And lastly this, God reveals himself to us through his spirit. Amen? You realize that if Abraham hadn't gone what he went through, he wouldn't have known God as Jehovah Jireh. He wouldn't have known him as Jehovah Jireh. You say you want to be closer to God. Are you willing to go through the experiences that will draw you closer to him? Amen. I can't sugarcoat this for you because it's not easy. But I can tell you what he'll provide. Everything you need. If God called you to it, he'll provide the means for you to do it. Amen. He will do that. Are you willing to travel the road that is required to know him? And as we close. Do you realize Isaac's life points to Jesus? I don't know if you thought that, folks. Isaac's life points to Jesus. Amen? See, Isaac was loved by his father. Guess what? Jesus was loved by him. Isaac willingly offered himself. Guess what Jesus did? Jesus willingly offered himself. Isaac carried the wood for his own sacrifice. Jesus carried the wood for his own sacrifice. Y'all understand this morning. Both of them were sacrificed on the same hill. See, you, you don't know where you're going if you don't understand where you come from. Amen. Both were delivered from death on the third day. Amen. I don't know. I mean, the third day he's ready to be sacrificed and, and, and Abraham's ready to bring the knife down and, and the angel of the Lord comes. And what happened to Jesus on the third day? Scripture says that he got up. He rose. And he didn't say some power. He didn't say 99.9%. He said, I have all power in heaven and on earth. Would you stand? As, as we have a song, and if you want to pray, again, the altar's open. You come down and pray. But I can say this. Everywhere you go is perfect. God can change you at the gas station. Amen? And I'll say this, and he, he doesn't want me to say this, because I've seen what it can do in his life. A red box seems to come. For all eternity. So where you are, God can get you right where you're at and what you're doing. So as they say, you respond. If you need to pray, you come and pray. If you want me to pray with you, I'll pray with you. If you need to do business with the Lord and then celebrate that with the church, you respond to the Spirit.